Hey guys, Striker here with another video. This time, after it's been heavily requested, I'll be doing a Momentum M Plus guide. I've also created a document, which we'll be going over here in just a second. Uh, and in the guide document that I made, I go over when to play uh, momentum and keys, the general momentum build. I have a, a build string in the document and a picture of the talent tree. Um, you know, what stats you should prior be prioritizing. Also, what gear you should be prioritizing first. Gearing philosophy section. Of course, a rotation section going over the AOE opener and single target opener. Um, and then just resources that I use that I'm going to reference in the video. And I think that's all of it. Alrighty, so let's get started. And we'll go over the rotation first this time. Alrighty, so there's actually been a little bit of new news. I guess what news isn't new, but you know, some news about uh, a little change as far as AOE and the momentum rotation. I highlighted it. In purple because this could be different to what you currently know it was for me up until just a few hours ago basically what people are saying now is even in your essence break window you want to throw glaive over annihilation because it just does more damage and also you want to keep the soul ren dot rolling so but yeah let's go over the the opener in aoe so you want to sigil flame as you're going in and then immo aura you fell rush in then you hunt and during your initiative window which is the crit chance proc and then you want to throw glaive get your soul ran and burning wound dots rolling then you want to go i beam and now you're going straight into your essence break window so you i beam you want a vengeful retreat kind of through the mobs so you're not too far away when you land and then you essence break death sweep meta death sweep and then throw glaive and when you throw this glaive that's assuming that the essence break window is done so then now you want to use your i-beam from the metamorphosis i-beam reset i-beam and then annihilation death sweep should be up by then and then throw glaive and then so from there on out it's just kind of like a normal priority you want to make sure you keep on fell rushing to keep your momentum buff up vengeful retreat on cd just like as soon as it comes up just send it and then blade ants slash death sweep on cd obviously and then throw glaive pretty much you want to be and this applies even in single target. You want to throw Glaive over Annihilation pretty much all the time, especially if your Soul Ren dots um, are falling off on your targets or if you're sitting at two stacks of throw Glaive. Other than that, you Annihilation. Immo Aura, as soon as, especially if you're like at a high amount of targets, you want to make sure you Sigil Flame right away because you get Fury from it and then also the dot damage is pretty good. And then Fell Blade is there just in case you need Fury for any of the harder hitting abilities or maybe I like to use it to Fell Rush and then like Blade back into the mobs quickly. And same thing with Vengeful Retreat. Uh, it's great for that. All right, so let's go into game and quickly show you that. So um, just a tip here too, if you have Puzzle Box, what you'd want to do is probably just sigil flame and then while that's going you can click on your puzzle box then go in so you have like the most amount of uptime on your initiative but anyways this is just the rotation in general all right so let's do this we'll do it a little slow so we're gonna sigil flame in my aura fell rush fell blade back in the hunt throw your glaive i beam vengeful retreat through the mobs Essence Break, Death Sweep, Meta, Death Sweep, Rogue Glaive, High Beam, and then you're just keeping everything up and using it whenever it comes up. Making sure that you never have more. Basically, that you never let your soul rending dots fall off and you never let yourself get to two stacks of throw glaive also i don't know if you saw it there but um something you can do outside of your essence like when your essence break is up you can you obviously when you vengeful retreat you want to pair it with um if you can a throw glaive which you almost should always be able to do that. Um, that'll be big damage. Also, if you go back, you can see how I was able to Vengeful Retreat, 
Broglave, Sigil Flame, and then, you know, Blade Dance. Get the Emma Ore ticking during all that. Yeah, just scaled, scales wildly, right? So some other things you want to keep in mind during all this is um, you have a talent called Ragefire going, which I'll bring up here. So each time Immolation Ore deals damage, 35% of the damage dealt by up to three critical strikes is gathered as Ragefire. When Immolation Ore expires, you explode, uh, dealing all stored Ragefire damage to nearby enemy. Let me show you that. So see how this is stacking up? For each crit with Immolation Aura, so up to three targets, we're at three targets here, so every crit crit, it uh it stored up that damage. Then when it expires, it deals all that stored up damage and just explodes. And obviously you can tell that when there's a really big mob pool, it's extremely extremely important that you are in the middle of all the mobs when immolation or expires when it expires you want to make sure that you have your momentum buff up and if you can try to have initiative up at the same time hopefully having a ventral retreat line up somewhat well with it right so that's also big damage other than that you always want to make sure that you throw glaive your targets so you have the dots rolling but you want to make sure you do that before an eye beam before a demonic window and especially before you go in your essence break window like in the opener you don't want to waste a global and potentially miss your two death sweeps in your essence break window and then yeah ideally you should always get two death sweeps in a single demonic window make sure you're pressing vengeful retreat on cd for bonus crit and don't forget to sigil flame if there's like five plus mobs and it's not in the middle of your essence break window or your demonic window good for fury generation and just general damage it's big damage after you eventually retreat make sure you're pairing it with the throw glaive you know that's out that's if you're outside of your essence break window of course now you still do throw glaive in the middle of your essence break window but that's after the fact that you get your death sweep off first because you know you're on a timer in the ss break window just make sure like if you know you can get the death sweep off at some point during your essence break window then fine you know maybe you can backflip essence break and then throw glaive as you're walking in but depends on the situation right maybe you'll only be able to get one ability in the middle of it because there's an upcoming mechanic for mobs that would cause you to run out and then not be able to maybe you would only had one global to use right but ideally you want to make sure that you you don't let that happen and then yeah prioritize throw glaive over annihilation when there's no dots ticking on the mobs and you are at two stacks of throw glaive okay so let's go over the single target opener for momentum so you want to sigil of flame as you're going in emma or a fell rush in the hunt throw your glaive before the eye beam then you vengeful retreat essence break death sweep meta death sweep and then annihilation so basically what this is saying between these two the two differences are that throw glaive is better when there's two or more targets it will do more damage right if it's full single target then annihilation would do more damage in your essence break window when it's amped when that annihilation is amped by 80 percent right and then after that yeah you just eye beam annihilation death sweep throw glaive if soul rend has expired the soul rend dot has expired or if throw glaive is at two stacks and then annihilation spam and then outside of that obviously just make sure to keep fell rushing to keep your momentum buff up vengeful retreat on cd blade dance and death sweep on cd as soon as it's up and then throw glaive is better in single target outside of your essence break window so you want to make sure you're throwing your glaive before annihilation especially if the soul rent dot has fallen off or you're at two stacks of throw glaive Immora on CD, Sigil Flame if you need Fury, otherwise you can ignore this part. And then same thing with like Fellblade. If you need Fury, you can use it. Or you can use it to get back in after a Fell Rush quickly. So let's go over that real quick. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just basically the same thing. Just remember the difference here is that um, in the Essence Break window in the opener, I'm going to uh, use my last global on an Annihilation instead of Throw Glaive, right? So Sigil Flame. Emma Aura, Fell Rush, Throw Glaive, get the dots rolling, High Beam, Eventual Retreat, Essence Break Window, Meta here, boom, and then get the last Annihilation off, and then use your other I Beam, 
Go Glaive. And then just normal stuff from here on out, right? See, I was running out of fury there. And I sigil flamed. So, and then, I don't know if you guys saw it there too. After that sigil flame, but I fell rushed through the target to get momentum back up. But then I actually vengeful retreated back to my target. Um, and that got me exactly in the melee range once again, and actually behind the target. So kind of cool there. And then in the initiative proc from the vengeful retreat, I threw my glaive and uh, death sweep as soon as I can. So yeah, lots of buffs and everything to track. It's it's a whole thing. It's not. So I'm st still like. <laughs> I am not the best in the world at it still. I, I feel like this is much more difficult than Gla Glaive Tempest. But even if played a little suboptimally, uh, it does more damage than Glaive Tempest in a key. It just does. So sorry if that's not what you want to hear, but uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of true, right? And then also, for anyone that's interested in um, the weak wars and my UI and stuff, like how I'm tracking all that, like I got a momentum tracker here, I got a vengeful retreat reminder, um, I got a soul ren tracker up here, so that tells me when my soul ren dot has expired on my target. And this fell rush icon is also for if I'm missing momentum buff. If you're interested in all that and having the same thing as me, in the description below, I have a link to another YouTube video I made uh, that goes over over all that and it also goes over my add-ons and um, some other stuff too basically all the UI stuff that I use you can have too. Uh, most of it is free so go and check that out all right so that is the rotation and if that's all you wanted to know then uh, thanks for watching and but for the other people that want to know more about the class in general say you're just starting out let's first start off with the uh, the general momentum build right so basically what makes this the m plus momentum build is these talents over here on this side of the tree growing inferno immolation auras damage increases by 10 percent each time it deals damage so that just scales wildly in aoe uh, burning wound so you can put this on three targets max but it you know does like 9k damage over 15 seconds but the better part is is that it increases damage taken from your immolation aura by 40 seconds but like i said this can only be applied to three targets and then the big money maker the big hard hitting ability other than actually throwing your glaive of course is rage fire it explodes and deals all the stored up da damage to all nearby enemies so it's uncapped so yeah absolutely crazy it's hard to optimize because you want to make sure that you have your momentum buff up when it expires and preferably in the middle of most your immolation aura. And then also some even better optimization, if you can get eventual retreat before the rage fire expires, then it's even bigger damage, right? Because that extra crit will scale with the know, know your enemy talent and it, it can be crazy. But yeah, that's a lot of movement while you're still trying to make sure that your immolation aura is still ticking on mobs. And then also another difference here that isn't in the single target momentum build, but it is in the, AO, in the AOE Mythic Plus build is throwing your glaives, right? So throw glaive deals 20% increased damage for each enemy hit, the soul run debuff, and the enemies necessary so basically this makes it so your mastery it's not just the mastery doesn't scale your chaos damage but it scales all types of damage right so that is the talents and then i put in a little note down here like um utility talents section basically uh if you like there is one thing one talent over here that you can take that could be more damage but it's hard to optimize that's called misery and defeat so uh after your sigil misery is expired or like the mobs that you feared got out of fear uh you deal 20 percent increased damage to them for five seconds so that could end up being a lot more damage and i do see some demon hunters at the high end take it but it is hard to optimize and it's kind of counterintuitive to the purpose of sigil misery in the first place right i use this just as a stopper thinking like azure vault you know on the first couple pulls where you got those uh flowers that casts those really hard hitting abilities of course i first use chaos nova or like maybe a meta stun but this is also another stop right 
sigil misery and if you can time that well. So if I was just to send the sigil misery right in the beginning, not interrupting any cast because I just want the damage amp during my essence break window, then I'm kind of trolling the key, right? I mean, maybe that doesn't matter at the low end, but you know, this is an ability where you think of the group and not of yourself, right? You know, do what you like. You can swap out talents for this one to do more damage. That is completely up to you. Just do what you feel is best for, for you and the group. What else? You can also uh, take the talent that uh, gives you a three minute darkness instead of the five like it normally is. As you can see right here, you can switch out maybe the lower uh, chaos no nova um, cooldown for it to take it. I've seen people do that. Or you can take out a, a, a tick from the will of Illidari to do that. And then, yeah. So basically, I kind of, you can read this more in detail. And I give some examples on like when these kind of talents are uh, are helpful or not helpful in keys. Uh, so yeah, just check out the guide and read that. And, um, let me know if you have any other additions you'd like to add in. So all right, so when to play momentum? Just re just another reminder. I mean, this is just my my opinion and going off of my experience. You know, I am almost a 3K IO Havoc DH is at the start of uh, week six in Dragonflight season one. Uh, I think I'm now like rank 35th uh so i mean my experience is kind of good but at the end of the day take it with a grain of salt and do what you feel is best anyways so for fortified on azure vault um i do see a lot of dhs still playing momentum but honestly and i did try it a lot last week in week five but it was only until i uh actually switched to glaive tempest that i finally chested a 22 av so <laughs> you know take from that what you will but me personally i I think I'm just going to stick with Glaive Tempest on, on Azure Vault, even on Fortified. It's a lot safer. There's so many swirlies and so many casts you got to worry about interrupting in that key uh, that playing momentum can be a little overwhelming. Um, and I'm sure it is for a lot of people, you know, that aren't at the high, high end of Mythic Plus. And then for Court of Stars, I pretty much always play momentum. Halls of Valor always play momentum and then even on tyrannical i feel halls of valor um is still a great key to play momentum on because uh well depending on how your tank pulls and your route but uh there's still so many big pulls and the mobs still hurt really really bad on tyrannical uh to where i think there's a strong argument for momentum and then for ruby life pools on fortified i'd recommend momentum Pretty much the trash in there is always the, the stoppers now after the bosses have been nerfed a bit. And them Inferno guys, they need to die ASAP. Also the Cinder Weavers, uh, those guys need to die ASAP. I mean, just too many crazy mobs to where playing a less AoE optimal build um, would be, you know, it would just be a huge detriment, right? All right. And then no coup defensive. Um, so um, fortified no coup defensive, always play momentum. Just a lot of big pulls in there. Shadow Moon Burial Grounds, I still play Momentum, even though there's not a bunch of really big pulls, but it still feels strong in there. And then obviously Algathar Academy. I mean, that is the Momentum, <laughs> that is the Havoc DH Momentum dungeon, in my opinion. Um, it's so much fun. Uh, and then the other one on Tyrannical is obviously Algathar Academy for the reasons I just mentioned. All right. And then stat priority, it's really, really simple. Agi slash eye level, you wanna take that and then just crit, 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 crit. Uh, but also mastery is really great too. And that's just about all you need to worry about is just crit mastery. Although there is one caveat to all this, haste. Now people say haste is just as bad as verse here, but I don't think it is because personally, and this is just anecdotal experience, I have played like, high crit, high mastery builds, but with like only 6% haste or 8% haste. And it's just the momentum build feels really weird when it's like that. You feel slow, you feel sluggish, you don't, like you're not generating fury nearly as much. And so that's why I say here, try to make sure that you're getting like 10% haste. And remember this is just anecdotal, anecdotal here. Uh, this is just the baseline of what's gonna make momentum feel like playable, I suppose. Um, so after 10% haste, then haste is way less important than crit and mastery, right? And then down here, um, I just, just what I explained, you know, I have some more notes down here. Um, and then I talk about why uh, crit is so good. It's the know your enemy talent, which converts 80% of your critical strike chance into bonus critical strike damage. So your crits hit even harder 
scaled off your crit chance. And then, yeah, obviously mastery is so good because of the any means necessary uh, talent, which we gone over. That makes mastery so good. And then, not really important here, but uh, you know, I just put in a reference thing like how my how my stats look currently, at, without consumables, mind you, as of the 17th. All right, and then trinkets here, just ranked. Obviously, grief torch number one. It's from the raid. It's from broodkeeper. And it's a very rare drop, meaning that when it does drop, it's going to be higher than the, the rest of the gear that she drops at eye level. And then Whispering Icon. Ideally, you want Grief Torch and Whispering Icon. But in case you don't raid, you can get the Puzzle Box from Algathar Academy. That's really good. And Hunger of the Pack from Halls of Valor. And some other ones down here that are solid too is the Windscar Whetstone from Court of Stars. It's not the best, but it is good. And then also Ice Goldvold, also from Halls of Valor. This one's funny though. You will have to have a ranged person loot it and then also trade it to you. So hopefully you have some ranged DPS buddies. But as you can see here, your ranged attacks and spells have a chance to call down a fell meteor on your target dealing X amount of damage, right? And so you may notice right in the beginning, it says your ranged attacks. And you're like, well, dude, we're melee DPS. What do you mean? Well, actually, um, I guess we're hybrid because a lot of our abilities count as ranged abilities for some reason. So I'm thinking like Eye Beam, Blade Dance, Immolation Aura, um, Sigil of Flame, uh, Fell Rush, I believe. So things like that, they count and they can actually proc it. And I'll give you an example here and proof that it actually still works, right? So you can see here, Fell Meteor, this is the proc from the Eye of Skull Vault, uh, actually still did 3.1% of my damage, right? So, and I hit the target dummy for like a minute. So yeah, it's still good. And then on top of all that, obviously it gives crit as its stat on it. And as we know, we love crit. Demon Hunters love crit, but can't get enough crit. There's not a point in which we stop not wanting crit. Oh, and I put in a little note here too, Storm Meter's Boon, is sim bait like you know maybe you, you went to blood mallet and you went to uh five targets and you were like wow storm eater boon so good 11.33 percent damage increase in five targets well no not really because uh you'll be dead half the time when you use it right because you're just standing there and there's so many mechanics going on in m plus and so many circles uh, little swirlies on the ground trying to kill you uh, you'll likely die. That trinket, it turns you into elemental for 10 seconds and basically incapacitates you. It does big damage, but like I said, you're standing there still, uh, so you'll probably die. Um, all right, and then quickly going over the rest here, gearing philosophy, just prioritize four piece set first, then weapons, craft your, uh, with the first spark you get, craft a 418 weapon. You um, Ideally, you want to craft it with blue silken linen embellishment or uh, the fang endorments. Both are fine. I think blue silk and linen is a little bit better. It gives like a mastery proc when you're over 90% health. Uh, next up, trinkets. I would prioritize trinkets. They account for a lot of your damage. Then you can get like specialty items like the ring from Kost. It's okay. But the ring from Aranog from the raid is extremely good. Uh, puts a dot on mobs uh, whenever you deal fire damage. Or has a chance to put a dot on mobs whenever you deal fire damage, right? And so I got the mythic one. And so it puts like a 7k dot on them that ticks for every two seconds. So that's great. And then another specialty item with your second craft or with your second spark, you want to craft the 418 necklace, the elemental lariat. And you can socket this with uh, gem slots. And the gems you want to put into them are 270 mastery and 33 crit gems. And then one primary stat slash crit gem in there. And then also something to keep in mind here, and I had a, a viewer remind me of this in my Glaive Tempest video, make sure if you have other socket slots in your gear, make sure you socketing them all with the same uh, gem, with the same type of gem, 70 mastery, 33 crit gems. Otherwise, if it's a different one, then your elemental lariat has a chance to proc a stat buff of the, the differing um, stat buff, okay? 
And then for M+, the third spark I used to craft was the 418 Engineering Battle Res Wrists with crit. Um, full crit on it. You get tons of crit, and it's really strong, right? Um, and also, I, you know how many keys I've saved with this battle res? Um, you know, maybe the healer was the only battle res, right? Uh, and we're in the middle of a bo boss fight. Being able to get them up successfully saves keys. Has plenty of times. And then fourth one, just sim your character using the Droptimizer sim. So basically, you just go to raid bots and um, go in game. And you should have the simulation craft add-on first. Type slash simc, do control copy to copy that string. Go in here and then paste that in. Then select the professions epic, select the eye level, select the stats, and then you know run the drop optimizer and it will tell you what would be the biggest DPS upgrade for you. And then also something here. So I forgot to mention these embellishments Right here, and from the first two, Elemental Lariat counts as an embellishment, and then obviously the ones that we put on our weapon count as an embellishment. You can only have two of those. Those are like damaging embellishments, things that actually make you do more damage. But there is another one called an Alchemical Flavor Package or something like that, um, that you can put on uh, another piece of gear that is an embellishment, but it doesn't count towards one of these unique embellishments, right? And so what that Alchemical Embellishment does is basically makes it so your food buffs will last through um, through death. So you won't have to keep on eating and eating, eating after you die. And we already went over rotation and the general philosophy. And then as far as enchants and consumables and gems, on the back you want graceful avoidance, uh, which is 125 avoidance. You want waking stats on chest, 200 avoidance on wrist. Belts, if you're an engineer, and I feel like not enough people know about this, is uh, you can actually tinker your belt uh, with the Shadowlands Tinker Dimensional Shifter. And uh, that's basically like a free invis pot. And to make this tinker, it's like 10 gold or something, something ridiculous like that, right? Uh, so super easy to level up Shadowlands Engineering as well if you just came back for uh, Dragonflight and you hadn't been playing Shadowlands. Uh, so look into that. Uh, on the legs, you want f Fierce Armor Kit Tier 3. Feet, you want Watcher's Loam Tier 3. Um, on, the, on both rings, you want plus 82 crit. On weapons, you want Sophic Devotion tier three times two. And then, uh, although um, just something to keep in mind is that uh, I like say you're just starting out and you get a new weapon and it's 395 eye level or whatever, right? Uh, do not buy a Sophic Devotion tier three because if you're gonna keep on playing a lot, then you'll probably end up finding a better weapon somewhat soon. Uh, so just buy a Sophic Devotion tier two. Uh, they're pretty spendy, depending on your server and everything. Uh, but for me right now, I think they're around 30k. They are dropping in price though, which is nice. Um, and consumables, file corrupting rages, by far and away the best. Um, so it gives you 1,200 crit or something like that um, after the negative effect of it is done. So this will period. What this thing does, it will periodically do damage to you. Like it'll go through phases of doing damage to you, and once it does 100% of your health and dot ticking damage, then you get the the crit buff. And so you can pause the video and read that right there. Um, I'm hovering over it right now, but yeah, it does do. I mean, just all that extra crit is insane, right? So, um, but be warned with the negative side of it. Um, it might not be the best thing to use in like a ruby life fortified ruby life pools for example where there's a lot of dots going out fire dots and things like that and so then the second best option would be file of elemental chaos it has no negative effect it's a bit less damage but it's still pretty good um, and then file glacial fury is also fine not the best but it's it's good for single target but actually not aoe um weapon oil or sharpening stone it's the buzzing rune that gives you like 300 some crit food you can buy the faded fortune cookies but that can only be used before the key uh, what this is, is basically a plus 76 primary stat, so just like the Feast, but in, with the Feast, uh, you can use it at any point. You can use it before, during the key, whatever. It's just more expensive. Uh, and then if you're too cheap to buy all that, then you can buy Thousand Bone Tongue Slicer, which is Crit Mastery Personal Food. Um, damage Potion, obviously just Elemental Potion of Power. Uh, some keys you can buy a Potion of Shocking Disclosure, like on the Tree Boss in Elgathar Academy. What this potion does it you'll pulse for like 9,000 damage every five seconds if it's a huge mob pool then obviously you know it's going to be ticking for a lot it can be big damage but generally just by the elemental potions power right 
It's the only real damage pot. And then here I have my all my resources listed. Yeah, Raider.io is great for choosing what build you want to use for a key. Same thing with subcreation.net. Uh, that's a great video. I mean, a great website. Raidbots.com, that's how you sim your character and know it's up an upgrade or not. Blood Mallet's great too for targeting uh, trinkets or other things, just general simming information about your class and your spec. Uh, DH Discord is good. DH Discord is good to find out general information, especially about rotation. And then uh, Wowhead as well. They have guides, but they don't really update it all that often. And some of the information could be wrong. So anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let me know if I got any information wrong in your opinion. You know, I'm not perfect at this build. Like I said, I do play it quite often on Fortified Weeks though. And I really, really hope this guide, this written guide and this video help all of you. And more videos coming out in the future. Like, comment and subscribe if you want to get the noti notification for that. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.